Okay guys, in this video I will discuss about how moment is transferred in case of a beam splice as well as in case of a column splice. Okay, so if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe and also don't forget to press the bell icon so that in future you can be benefited. Okay, so whenever you design any steel structure, you know that based on the length of the beam and the column, you may have to use two pieces of steel member. Okay, so if the height of this column is too much or the length of this beam is too much, in that case, you may have to use two pieces of steel member to construct a single column and a single beam. Just like this one here, you can see that two steel member has been connected here by using a splice connection to make a single beam. Also here you can see that two column member has been connected by using a splice connection to form a single column. Okay, and the topic of this video is how the moment in this connection is transferred from one part to the other part. Okay, so let's say you are supposed to use a splice in this location. Okay, or let's say suppose you are going to use some splice in this location for this beam. So definitely if you look into the bending moment diagram for any frame. Okay, in case of a portal frame like this. Okay, let's say we have simply have some UGL or some point load. So the bending moment diagram looks like this and this okay to this so let's say you are supposed to use some splice here or here or in case of a beam let's say in this location so each of this point have some amount of bending moment okay so when you are going to design the splice you have to take care of this bending moment and now how to transfer this bending moment from one part of the member to the other part okay so just for discussion in this video we are assuming that you are using i section or wide flank section as your beam member and column member okay and you know that in case of any i section or wide flank section if you have bending moment about the major axis okay if you have bending moment acting about the major axis how the stress is going to be distributed simply like this one okay and here you can see that majority of the stress is being accumulated along the flange okay so the majority of the stress is being carried by the flange so in case of bending moment we can say that the bending moment is actually being carried by the flange of the i section or the white flange section we are ignoring the function of the web okay so if now i have some I section like this okay this is the flange this is the wave and this is another flange now let's say bending moment is being applied like this I can say that it is nothing but a compressive force and a tensile force the compressive force as well as the tensile force is being carried by the flanges only okay so in any connection in any connection if we have to transfer the bending moment from one part to the other part of the member what we have to do yes from this discussion it is clear to transfer the bending moment simply we have to connect the flanges okay so let's discuss one by one first in case of a beam okay so here in this beam let's say this is the bending moment okay so this is the bending moment and this bending moment is going to be transferred into a tension and a compression okay this is tensile force this is compressive force okay so here also this is the compressive force and this is the tensile force so now if you do not connect the flanges what will happen due to this tensile force the flanges will be get separated okay so simply put a plate here first at the top as well as at the bottom okay then put the bolts just like this one okay here also you can see this is the top flange this is the bottom flange of part one this is part 
two and first we have put the top plate then we have put the bolt to connect the flanges very simple now look into the column splice okay so this is another example of column splice here also same thing we are applying some moment and this moment is again is being transferred into push and pull or tensile force and compressive force right so to make a single entity by using this part one and part two what we have to do again just put a plate first connecting two flanges this is flange for part two this is flange for part one okay then put the bolt okay so to design this splice what you have to do just consider the moment okay based on the depth of the section just find out the tension or compression okay now design all this bolt for that tension let's say you have tension t and let's say you are using a uh, total one two three four five six number of bolt in each side this side and this side now in this side let's say the tension or compression is uh, let's say simply f so what should be the shear capacity of each bolt simply f by 6 as simple as that right so that's it if you love this video don't forget to share it